and appease and appease the gods. Whenever ritual involves the killing of human, it is considered illegal and it is generally considered murder. You know, looking at African culture. The belief system practice sorcery and ritual, but often use animal for ritual purpose. Iwato 2021 in his findings stated this. Human ritual killing has become a source of national concern due to the increasing number of people used for ritual purpose. In the past, ritual killing is known to be among the occult groups an act which is usually carried out in the secret. But it's often seen now that uh, ritual killing is no more the thing of the secret, but it's more often done. At times by the roadside, you see mutilated bodies, you see people with vital organs removed from the part of their body. Uh, this and often is carried, this is really the trend in the society now. Our ritual killing originated from man's insatiable quest for power and material things. In the face of modernization and industrialization, man's increasing greed to acquire material wealth have continued to solve thereby causing many to engage in various shady ways of seeking for wealth, including engagement in ritual activities that involve human sacrifice. Human sacrifice has been practiced on a number of occasions and in many cultures. The various rationales behind human sacrifice are the, are the same that motivates religious sacrifices in general. Human sacrifice is intended to bring good fortune and to pacify the gods, such as in the, ex, in the context of the dedication of a complete building like temple of, or bridge. Human sacrifice can be conducted to win the favor of gods in warfare. That's from Ashokpandi 2015. The practice of ritual killing and human sacrifice continues to take place in several African countries. Williams and David, Williams 2006 and David 2009, in contravention of the African Charter on Human and People's Rights and other human rights instruments. Godfrey 2020 submitted that human ritual killing can be grouped into three groups, namely the traditional grouping, occultic and contemporary ritual killing, each for different purposes. Like in the traditional ways we used to know is the uh, uh, ritual sacrifice of times when they have to be, when a king dies, Traditionally, I used to, I grew up to know this, that when the kings die, there'll be a replacement for sacrifice of human. And it's been in the, in the practice uh, from the time of the hood. And um, occultic, which uh, I, it's believed to be people in diabolic, that find diabolic means of living, uh, engage in these occultic groups to renew their covenants or to step up their powers, and in that they kill the huge human sacrifice for this. All of this, according to Godfrey 2020, uses human, rit human rit ritual. And now the contemporary ritual killing now goes on and it happens, it, it, it's like, it's, it's, it, it's a continual exercise in which people are killed daily for, for ritual. Uh, what we see in the site today is more of contemporary ritual killing than the occultic or traditional 
killings that we used to know in the past. And this contemporary or uh, this occultic and the traditional killing was not fully, is not always open. It's always done in the secret and it's not as common as what we are experiencing in the society today. Uh, Nigerian watch data in, in tracking rates of killing started from Bado killings in Ikorudu to Yahoo internet frosters and now Yahoo plus. Now as the ritual aspect of cyber crime or Yahoo, Yahoo statement of problem. Uh, the rate of um, ritual killing in the society is growing at a geometric progression and is mostly found among the youths. Killing for ritual purpose now flood the headlines of newspaper and also become the major headlines in our cable networks. This study aimed at charting the trend and trajectories of ritual killings in Nigeria. This study further reveals the present facts and figures of people killed with part of their organs removed for ritual purpose. The facts and figures are drawn from Nigerian Watch Database, which monitors letter violence in Nigeria since 2006. The research objective are uh, to investigate the spate of ritual killing across Nigeria with a view to showing the number of deaths to investigate the state of ritual killing per state in Nigeria, to chart the trend and trajectory of ritual killings in Nigeria, uh, methodology and its issue. Uh, in the past few months, there has been, uh, before the presentation of the, the actual, before the actual presentation, there has been um, a methodological, methodological uh, presentation the group usually presents. In light of this, I'll quickly go through our methodology and um, some of its challenges. Uh, Nigerian Wash is, a, is an online database that research following death. There must be at least a death. And we draw our, our data from 10 daily newspaper, 10 Nigerian daily newspaper. And the quantification of violence has not occupied the front burner of research in Nigeria. That's one of uh, one, 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 one of the, the more to this uh, we we will discuss in the earlier part. We'll I'll quickly go through the methodology that we help today's studies. The quantification of violence has not occupied the front burner of research in Nigeria. What one of the reasons for such is that crime statistics by the police and other government agencies are either unavailable, too, re too restrictive, or not reliable. Hence, the Nigerian Watch Data systematically track various led violence across Nigeria to address the paucity of data on violence and its victims in Nigeria. In a bit to explore the trends and pattern of ritual killing in Nigeria, Nigerian watch data is exhaustive, though without limitation, like other research engagements. It is far from exhaustive to some fatalities may go unreported by some national dailies. Accurate figure reportage is also, also posed a challenge to the newspaper as some of them over reports or on the report fatalities for the same incidents. Regardless of this limitation, the database aids a better understanding of the trend of ritual killing in Nigeria. We want to look at uh, our finding results and discussions of findings, which is ritual killing and number of people killed. There are ritual killings in Nigeria, it's a fact, it's a, it's a proven fact. And so many people have died, and so many people, so many people have died, and also so many people have lost vital organs in the process. As reported by Punch on February 6, 2022, as recent as this month, 
there is a blood, there is blood in the hand of many Jews in Nigeria. And this was brought about about uh, a 20 year old lady, Sophia Kende, who was grossly murdered and her head severed for money ritual by four teenagers in Abel Kutia, the state capital. Four of those guys, Sulia Majakodumi, uh, Waziri Ola Dende, and so forth. They are young guys between the age of 18 and 20, conspired together to kill a 20 year old lady who is the uh, girlfriend to one of them. And they did this in, in the boyfriend's room. This is to show the rate at which ritual killing is going in the society. And uh, most of the victims of this ritual killing are mostly ladies. And this and this young guys, these guys like a boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, to perpetrate this evil. Uh, we could see in, in, in further interviewing this young man, they, 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 it was discovered that they consulted the Facebook to get ingredients for this ritual killing. This will be discussed in our in, in, in our further findings as we go ahead with this research. And it's been reported that so many people have, have been killed or vital organs removed for ritual purpose in Nigeria. We have a statistics to show, it's able to show that over 170, over 1,758 people have been murdered for the purpose of ritual from 10th of February 2006 to 10th of February 2022 by Nigerian Wash. Uh, we want to look at states. The fact is established that there are ritual killing in Nigeria. We want to go by states to see how this ritual killing is done. A state with highest number of deaths from ritual killing. Ritual killing is a nationwide issue and is not restricted to one part of the country, nor is it peculiar to ethnic group or religion adherence. Ritual killings were reported in all states except Yobe states, according to Nigerian Watch database. So from 2006, February 10th, to, 20, to 2020, February 10th, it's only Yobe states that do not have ritual killing record in Nigeria. In light of this, some states are known to be in this constant barbaric habits of killing human for ritual purpose. The state with the highest record of killing according to Nigerian Watch data finding is Lagos State. Lagos State have 2,244 2, deaths from ritual killing in Nigeria. We could see the figure. Lagos State has the highest number of deaths from ritual killing in Nigeria. Uh, looking by the statistics we have from Nigerian Watch data, we have uh, the second state is the Del uh, Delta State with 241 deaths. Ogun State with um, 114 deaths. Imo State, looking at this state, Lagos South, South, um, the Southern part, Delta Ogun. Imo, the Southeast, South Two, also recorded death. Oyo State also recorded 87 deaths. Para State, 84. Uh, looking at this trend, we will see that it's more tending towards the South, southern part of the nation. But in all of it, it was recorded that they were killing across the nation. Bono State also have also have record of killing. Bono State happens to be the ninth state in Nigeria with uh, 68 deaths in her between 2006 to 2022. 
So we could see that in all of it, all the states in Nigeria have been involved in ritual killing in one way or the other. The 15 states happens to be Aqua Ivon states with 45 deaths. In all of this, we could see the high figure of death. So many people have been killed for ritual purpose. From these statistics, more people are even killed than political, uh, uh, political uh, uh, masterminded deaths in Nigeria. Uh, furthermore, looking at Lagos State, that happens to top the death, the, the highest death in Nigeria. We could see the trend of the going that in, 20, in 2017, Lagos State recorded more debt. This will come about in other discussion. Something led to 20, 2016 happen, that happens to be the highest number of debt. So furthermore, we could, we could see that Lagos State has the highest number of human ritual killing with 244 deaths as shown in the graph above. This is in line with AZ2016 that modern Lagos is increasingly susceptible to brute, to brutal, the brute violence witnessed in the face of cultism and ritual killing. Cultism like Bado phenomenon and ritual killing appear to be on the increase in Lagos states. Delta is the second highest with 161 deaths, Ogun State the third with 114 deaths, this finding is extracted from Nigerian WASH data. Uh, there has been headlines of killings, like this new headline showing court remanded four Yahoo boys over a uh, killing of couple. Yeah. So we want to quickly look at the trend of the trends and trajectory of ritual killing in Nigeria. Interestingly, uh, the trends of killing, the trends and trajectory of killing uh, in Nigeria follows a particular pattern. There was a time there is an onset of Yahoo, Yahoo. Uh, and followed by Bado killing, and followed by Yahoo Plus. This will explain further in the paper, Yahoo, Yahoo. Yahoo or internet fraud, according to Wikipedia, is a type of cyber crime. It's a cyber crime fraud or deception that makes use of internet and could involve hiding information or providing incorrect information to trick victims out of money, property, or inheritance. I'm so sure you'll be wondering how one with how Yahoo, Yahoo is to be linked with ritual killing in Nigeria. That will come, that will, will unfold as we go along in, in, in this presentation. Some of the first tasks like Obiwana, okay, okay. Uh, Raymond Olonwa Abbas. AKA Osh Poppy, where Instagram celebrities who were apprehended by United States of America for cyber related crime. This group apparently is, is not known, is known not to kill their victim, but what they do is that they swindle them to collect their money. At times, in the course of the swindle, they leave their, their victim traumatized, they leave their victim. Uh, uh, I think some of them die from uh, they, they suffer psych uh, psychological trauma and then um, it leads to death and some other things. Um, many, many times some of them do not get over this this um, this fraud and it affects them. So cyber fraud locally known as Yahoo Yahoo in Nigeria take various shapes and form which have undergone evolution in recent years. According to Tade, 2013, Yahoo boys rely on their computer slide to victimize 
unsuspecting persons in cyberspace. In the bid to curb cyber fraud, the Nigerian government signed the cyber crime bill into law in 2014, as well as went into partnership with organization into cyber crime management. With the cyber bill, the activities of Yahoo Boys was monitored and the various organizations set up to apprehend the group. The clamming, the clam triggered a change in dimension of crime from traditional Yahoo, Yahoo. According to Koji and Ukoji 2022, there was a transition between Yahoo, Yahoo to Bado Cult Group, which specialized in killing of their victims and soaking their blood in white handkerchief. Uh, before the full blown, before the full blown engagement in ritual killing by Yahoo Plus, a group known as Bado came into the scene. This deadly group perpetrates their evil act in the Kurodu area of Lagos which later spread to some parts of Lagos, Ogun State, and Oyo State. Bado boys, also known as court group, killed their victim by using every stone to crush their skull. Their models operandi includes spawning victims, residents, while they are asleep. After smashing the head of the victim, with grinding stone, they use a handkerchief to clean the blood and drain and, and bring before leaving the scene. This cult group also hypnotized lady, rape, and use handkerchief to wipe their vagina before killing, killing them. According to Godfrey 2020, during police interrogation, one of the suspects confirmed that each handkerchief stained with blood was sold for five, 500,000 Naira. He further revealed that they were more errand boy for rich politicians. But in their case, the blood and semen stained handkerchief were used to prepare spiritual defense for well to do Nigeria. One for 20. 17 also confirmed this. Ukoji and Ukoji 2022 stated that from 2009 to 2020, about 87 people were killed in 33 later incidents linked to Bado in the three biggest southern states of Lagos, Ogun, and Oyo states. While Lagos state recorded the majority of fatality, which was 75 deaths. Oguan or your state reported four and eight deaths, respectively. Ikorodu local government area of Lagos State suffered the most casualty compared to Koshofe and Ojo Council area. Now we are now going to uh, Yahoo Plus. We could see how the trend is moving from Yahoo Yahoo that uses the internet to swindle their victim to to after the bill by after the cyber bill transcending into Bado, and um, after Bado now comes Yahoo Plus or ritual killing. Both Tade 2013 and Ukoju Koji 2022 agrees that Yahoo Plus in its true form is ritual killing. They also concur that there is an increase in ritual killing across Nigeria. Uh, victims, victim of Yahoo Plus are mostly ladies who could either be their fiancé, female friends, neighbor, close relations. Vanguard February 3rd, 2022 reported that the Northern Cross River State town of Ogoja is under severe in invasion by ritualists as over 10 girls have been found in the past one month, have been killed in the past one month. Some residents of the area attribute the invasion of ritualists on the dust town to Yahoo Yahoo boys. Why others say the ongoing process for the election of a House of Representative member or the constituency may be responsible. In the past three weeks, bodies of young girls 
with their private parts removed and tongue cut off, have reportedly been found along Monaya Hospital Road in the outskirts of the town, Why some bodies were reco uh, uh, recovered floating on Monaya uh, River. Uh, there has been reports of Yahoo Yahoo involvement, Yahoo Yahoo, Plo, Yahoo Plus involvement. At uh, this stage, they are recognized and known as uh, ritualists. There's a report that Nigerian Watch captured that a mother, uh, I connived with my mother, killed a brother for money ritual, Yahoo boys. Uh, it gets to the extent that uh, this one is now seen to be open. It's no more in the secret. It seemed to be the inting by youth, some youth in the society. And uh, this young man is reporting that him and the mother connived to kill the younger brother for ritual. Uh, it's, it's a Yahoo guy. So the, this, this happened in, in, in Lagos State. Also, but in Delta State, we know from our re record, we have Lagos State to have the highest killing. Also in Delta State, mutilated body of middle-aged lady found in Delta community. You know, at times people are awake to find mutilated body. People are awake to find headless um, mutilated body. At times, maybe the head, you know, they, they probably severe the head uh, and other parts of the body. Uh, not leaving behind some other state that was also captured to have the highest number of killing in Nigeria is also Ogun State. Police arrest couple with severe breast and other human parts. And this is part of the ritual process in which some parts of the body may be removed and they sell this part of the body, like selling the part of uh, animals or the like. So it's part of the, the, the ritual processes of some of these uh, uh, cults group in Nigeria. So we quickly go to motivating factors. Uh, something probably will be behind, will be the reason why these things are really occurring in our society. Ritual killing and related human rights abuse take place in the continent because many people still have the following beliefs that the use of sham and the performance of ritual sacrifice can modify them spiritually. That rituals can enhance their fortunes in business and during elections. That rituals can protect them from harm, disease, poverty, accidents, death, or destruction. This is in line with Obineke 2008, who attributes ritual killing to poverty. Now, let's quickly go to who, to, to, who is to blame for these activities. Uh, playing the blame game still. Uh, indicates that the society is not ready to bring about a change the perception of youth in this get rich quick syndrome. Although some stakeholders blame TikTok, some blame Instagram, some blame Facebook posts. Um, further interrogating the young men that caught the head of Sophia in uh, Ogun State, they revealed that they got all this uh, item on Facebook that they got the post. And when I visited the, the post, I saw that was uh, two Fridays ago, I discovered that more than 27,000 people have visited that site, that same site. And um, I want to believe more would have visited the site before today's presentation. So the, 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 the uh, more blame is placed on Facebook posts, filmmakers, poor upbringing, Unemployment, uh, National Assembly member also been blaming Nollywood for the increasing spate of ritual killing. Uh, no, uh, also, in a Lagos based Ifa priest, Annapolis, Dr. Ifa Kuede Orifa Ani Kupo, also is putting blame on, on, on some bodies or religious body. You know, when it was stated that uh, it was quoted by the, 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 the guy that killed Sofiat, that he got the, this Ifa couples on Facebook. Uh, the, the priest responded by saying uh, in his investigation that those who are in, into ritual killing will either be Muslims or Christians. But the truth is that they have little or no knowledge about apps 
and roots. Why would an abalist post far couples on Facebook? A true abalist will not do that. So the blame game still keep going. Uh, according to Dr. Babajide Olalajulo, a senior lecturer at the Department of Anthropology and then um, uh, Archaeology and Anthropology, University of Ibadan, in his interview with the Daily Newspaper, attributes youth's involvement in ritual killing as a symptom of a failed national system. Tade 2022 also in his write-up, Money Ritual in Nigeria, Zazu Republic, pointed out the negative influence of hip hop musicians to youth in the society with government doing nothing about it. Uh, uh, listening to this Zazu Republic, uh, there are so many things you know that, that, that going through the lyrics, you will see so many things that were pointed out about Yahoo Yahoo, about uh, the youth in the society. And I think there should be a way this should be censored. Uh, solutions. Professor Oni Fagbonwe of psychology at the University of Lagos in a like disclaimed the message on ritual and success. According to him, rituals for both money and success exist only in the perception of the people. In all of this, killing of human for ritual purposes is barbaric and yield nothing. The get rich quick syndrome is a perception that some youth in the society have rather uh, in, the, in the society have rather than concentrating on their studies to become great in the society and involving in this killing. And looking at uh, this, uh, since most of the age brackets involved in the ritual killings are youths, government should make education easily accessible to all personally. At the, at the popular saying of the idle mind is the devil's workshop. With youth involvement in education, creative mindset to bring about transformation in the nation. And probably looking at the age range of those people still going back to Sophia's killing, looking at the age range, I think those young guys should either be preparing to go to the university or should be in the university. And now they, they are there, uh, severing the head of a lady, uh, thinking it will bring out money and they will be rich. And also, in addition to this, uh, I think the government should look into ASU strike with uh, the, 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 they, should, they, should, they should focus more on education and make sure students are kept in school rather than on and off of students uh, most times. With this, their mind will be traded off for other things and may rather not concentrate on their academics. Uh, ritual killing should is seen as grievous offense and judgment should be delivered. Some of the solutions to this is that uh, ritual killing should be seen as grievous offense and judgment should be delivered immediately. And in the light of this, the appropriate agencies such as National Orientation Agency, uh, parents, head of schools, religious leaders, and the media need to undertake a campaign to change the native narrative but willing the society. The resolutions of the House came after it considered a motion entitled Need to Curb the Rising Trend of Ritual Killing in Nigeria, presented at a plenary by the Deputy Minority Leader Toby Okechiku on the matters of urgent public importance. Presenting the motion, Okechiku noted that the incident of ritual killing had assumed an alarming rate in Nigeria in recent times. He said there was an upsurge of reported ritual killing with increasing case of abduction and missing person in different parts of the country, which in most cases, the culprit also rape, maim, kill, and obtain sensitive body parts of unsuspecting victims for Ritual purpose. Completion of the math. Completion. There is need for specific educational program to be organized to curb these acts and NGOs with specific tailored action to the eradication of the practice of human ritual killing among the youth of the nation should be set up. It is very obvious that ritual killing are caused by ignorance. 
more education should be directed to the anger. Victims of ritual killings are mostly minors or vulnerable individuals who do not live to seek justice or redress or who lack the resources to seek redress if ever they survive the ordeal. The family of victims fears spiritual or supernatural backlash and therefore do not hold their state accountable. And local authority lack the political will to uphold the rule of law and protect human rights. Many cases of ritual sacrifice take place in secret locations. They are largely unreported, uninvestigated, and on published. I just want to thank I want to thank everybody for listening to this presentation. Some contributions, comments, questions, and answer. I'll call on Dr. Victor to take this section. Dr. Victor is a the is the one deputizing this. Thank you, Biola Ayodoko, for the wonderful presentation. And uh, I'll call on listeners, anybody that has a contribution or wants to make a comment or wants to also throw a question to come up with it. Okay, are they so young? One call it Isaac. Yes, um, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Is, the paper was a very good one because it's actually dealing with the current issue and um, it's something that actually caused the attention of everybody, scholars and everyone in general. Um, I think it just it's a suggestion. I think that people should try to look at, you know, there was this um, repetition of the fact that most of the victims are ladies and minors. Even by the time you look among the minors, they are actually still female. So I think that, sh that, that should be a need to look into why female, why is it that it's actually female that this is uh, coming to? Why? What, what is it that they believe? What is it that they are looking into? And the female that make, what, what is their belief about this? We know their beliefs are false, but what is the motivational factor they, they, that drives them towards looking towards the, the, the female counterparts in, in making them victim of this egregious act? Moreover, I, I, want to, I would like to also say concern the issue of solution. <laughs> If we, if, if, we, if we will be so uh, truthful on this matter, we discover that that is to be factual. We discover that the solution should actually flow from the, gov from the government and the governance. What do I mean by that? Many people in this nation, many people have been, many, many people have been caught with evidences that uh, they embezzled it, they embezzled that. We have not been seeing justice. I think this, in a way, also encourages those who want to carry out this criminal act in not seeing anything to actually prevent them from doing it. So they should bring the example and let this youth actually see that actually there's rule of law, that is prosecution. And by the time they see this, the fear is actually in them because the law is there to actually maintain in our heart what um, what the the, the Freudian psychology we, we call the 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 conscience. So I I'm just looking at it that okay this is going to happen. Okay, let's also look at uh, the paper was talking about that should be an organization that should look into this. The police are there, but most of the time the report we hear about them 
that has also been reported is the fact that they even collect money from the Yahoo boys, the Yahoo Plus. Those they arrest, they collect money and they let them go. So what further measure can be put? Like I said the other time, something must come from hope. The justice and the rule of law must be respected. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Isaac. Okay, uh, let's look at uh, Babajide Olalo, Dr. Babajide. Can you make your contribution? Yeah, thank you very much. Um, thank you very much. I'm your moderator. Uh, I'm Babajide Olala Julo. I guess you can hear me very well. Sure. Uh, first, I have to congratulate um, the presenter for that wonderful presentation, especially in the aspect of um, tracing um, uh, uh, the kind of trends in a ritual killing across um, the country. Uh, sometimes if you don't have to follow this kind of paper, you come up with the impression that um, ritual killing is maybe limited to just a section of the country. But having said that, I want, to, I want us to see this problem as um, a problem of um, epistemology, uh, an epistemology that constructs the possibility of um, wealth outside economic production. And when we talk about uh, this kind of epistemology, we are talking about a context like um, what um, Jane and John Komarov regarded as uh, the occult um, economy. Uh, and within this, we still see the element of um, believing witchcraft, uh, believing a miracle wealth, which is being well propagated um, across all the Pentecostal churches in the country. Uh, recently, I think um, I got to know about a church where they came up with what they call the miracle alert. And, um, during service, the church members were expected to raise up um, their mobile telephone and then they can expect miracle alert to come in any moment from that. Um, and beyond that, we also see uh, the element of 409, which has been well um, uh, treated in this presentation, all of these are context. They are context for uh, what we see as ritual killing. But one thing I want um, the presenter to also note that um, uh, ritual killing, especially uh, with respect to uh, fast work, has an older history, especially when you have to look back as far back as 1996 with the Otokoto saga, which um, Daniel Jordan Smith represented very well in his article on uh, ritual killing 419 uh, and what he called um, the popular imagination of inequality. So when you look also at this history, it may also be possible to come up with another trend, which I want the presenter to take good note of, that there is usually a rise in the incidence of ritual killing whenever there is economic meltdown. So when you see this correlation between economic meltdown and ritual killing, we may start to see ritual killing as a kind of um, um, response from people, a kind of um, uh, uh, a response to disenchantment as a result of um, their poverty. So this and other things, I mean this um, correlation is what um, I believe um, the presenter can also explore and try to see whether uh, the economy of the period where there are incidents of rise in ritual killing actually uh, differ from when we have a kind of respite. Thank you very much. 
Thank you, Baba Jide, for that contribution. The presenter will take note of that. Uh, we want to look at the chat box to see the questions or contributions by people. Okay, uh, Abdullahi Mohammed asks, how do you operationalize ritual killing? How do you operationalize ritual killing? He asked that based on, I observed that the study has focused mainly on Southwest, South, South, and Southeast. Well, uh, uh, Abdullah, I think the study focused on, has a national outlook, uh, but the, the presenter made a point, a reference to the fact that the database did not capture something, anything on ritual killing on Yube, right? Yeah. Yube, yes. So uh, it has a national outlook. So on the aspect of operationalizing ritual killing, the presenter will say something about that. Thank you, Abdullah. Thank you, Abdullah. Uh, uh, ritual killing, like I in in my presentation, cut across all the states in Nigeria. It also takes some of the uh, model of uh, operando. Uh, uh, it's involved and the age categories that are involved in this killing, the perpetrator and the people also involved in the killing, in, in ritual killing, I mean, the victims. And going further, I'm looking at what the question of um, Baba, uh, Bankole, who, who was asked, who said, uh, why female? Like, I, I earlier said that um, most victims are vulnerable. And we could see that that is one of the reasons why female follow victim. Apart from that, they are vulnerable uh, based on the model of operandi of uh, Bado killings. They, they use the, uh, the uh, specimen from the vagina to, to carry out this deadly attack. And I think it's one of the major reasons in which um, females are vulnerable. Also present with me are my colleagues. I have Victor, uh, Dr. Victor, uh, Victor here, and I also have Vitus Ukoji. They will all do justice to this. Vitus Ukoji, please. Yeah, I just want to dwell briefly on the question that I asked about uh, the presentation of uh, Richard Kelly. Uh, Nigeria Watch is a database that deals with labor violence. In our methodology, we specify we don't capture other incidents except involves at least one death. So the statistics we got uh, used to analyze the paper was actually acquired from our database and they involved fatalities. So any incident that didn't involve one, that we didn't capture. Yeah, we understand there are, there are so many other incidents that might have occurred, but what if they're not reported, we can't capture them. If they don't involve fatalities, we can't capture them. So that just to be specific on the operationalization. Okay, thank you. Uh, back to Sukoji, the coordinator of Nigeria Watch. And then so uh, James Feng Fengske is on to ask or make contributions. So we'll open up. Thank you. Um, so I have six suggestions. The first is when you report these rates of violence, it would be good to do them per capita. It's in no surprise to me that the second largest state in Nigeria has the highest rate of ritual killings. What's much more striking to me is how low Kano is on the list. So it'd be good to have rates per capita rather than just counts by state. Second, it sounds like you have much richer data than what, you, what you're reporting. It would be neat to use the precisely dated not per year, but a specific day, 
and precisely geocoded a specific settlement, not just an LGA or a state. What I have in mind here is the Armed Conflict Location Event Database, or ACLED, one of the most popular sources of data used for finding uh, instances of protest or riots or of violent conflicts. A data set in that format would allow you to do a whole lot more with the information you've gathered and would excite a whole lot of researchers elsewhere thinking that this is data that they could use. Third, I think it'd be really interesting to see just a sequence of maps, ritual killings in each year over time. This would let you see trends and patterns across space. It would help generate hypotheses about kind of the underlying sources, what leads to changes over time. Uh, fourth, I don't have a good answer on how to deal with this, but it's definitely an issue to think about. Think about which ritual killings make it into your data and which don't. So in order to end up in your data, it has to end up in a newspaper. And as far as I can tell, a national newspaper. And so that to me suggests that things in remote villages are more likely to be missing than things that happen in big cities. And that's hard to deal with. I don't have good solutions. You could probably go use some local newspapers for a selected area and see if you pick up any more events that'll give you an idea of just how much you're missing using the sources that you have. You could see how many events end up in multiple newspapers. Fifth, I'd worry a little bit. You want to be careful to find out which of these events really happened and which of them didn't. I'm reminded of the satanic panic in the United States in the 1980s, in which a lot of childcare workers were falsely accused of uh, sexual abuse of children and of satanic abuse of children. Uh, the McMartin preschool trial is the most famous example of this, but people went to prison for crimes that never happened. And so I'm slightly worried here that the police have a strong interest to say that something egregious happened, but don't worry, you can trust the police, we've solved it, but you should give the police more powers to deal with it in the future. So see how much here you can verify from independent sources and you're not just taking the word of a police or somebody's political enemy. Uh, lastly, It'd be good, and this is me with my academic economist hat on, to think about general interest. For a Nigerian policymaker audience, everything you're doing here is what they want to hear. But Nigeria can't be the only country with ritual killings. And the causes of ritual killings must be general across many countries. And so it'd be good to hear about the literature and hypotheses from outside Nigeria. What does Nigeria have in common? What can other cases learn from the Nigerian example. Thank you. Thank you, Professor James. I just want to say thank you for attending this seminar. I want to appreciate it. Professor James is my mentor. He's a lecturer at the um, University of uh, yeah, in UK. I want to really thank you for this presentation and this contribution. Thank you so much. Yeah, Paul looks all this and work towards it. Thank you so much. I also want to appreciate uh, Dr. Judy Olajulo, uh, the earlier question and contribution towards this uh, presentation. Thank you so much. We'll probably quickly uh, go to get more question, uh, more question uh, type. Yeah, so I'll uh, over to Dr. Victor Eze. Thank you, Professor James, and thank you to all contributors so far. I don't know whether we, okay, we have a hand raised by Ado Biago. Obiago. Okay, you can speak good now. Afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon, everybody. I am Ado Biago Obiago, a lecturer at the University of Nigeria, Soka. Okay. So uh, the, the, the topic and the presentation I really appreciate is really a very important concern.
kind to Nigerians and to everybody, especially women. So the the presenter had made, sorry, I think uh, somebody that asked the question had raised an important observation that women are mostly the target of rituals and youths going for using human parts for rituals. So uh, the, the, the question is, why is it that women are mostly targeted? Another respondent here has made mention of the fact that they are vulnerable. But I also want to connect it to the issue of gender inequality or patriarchal culture, where women are seen as objects, just like um, animals are being sacrificed for rituals. So I think the issue of using women or, tar or targeting women for rituals is also connected to the patriarchal culture that is really very strong in Nigeria, where women are not really seen as full human beings, but as objects that could be sacrificed to God to please the male folks. That is my contribution. Thank you. Thank you for that contribution, Adobe Ago. And uh, we want to look forward to more questions or contributions or comments. Thank you all for the questions, for the contributions, uh, for the comments, for, que for the contribution, comment, questions. Uh, I want to believe we have given you a very good feedback to the questions uh, you asked in this presentation. Uh, in conclusion to this presentation, uh, you could visit Nigerian Watch online data to get more facts and details about ritual killing in Nigeria. You could subscribe as an organization, as an institution, and you could also subscribe individually. The subscription is always annually. So you write to the coordinator Nigerian Watch to get subscription for, 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 for the data we have. We have rich data on so many violent deaths in Nigeria. Uh, especially I want to thank um, uh, all the participants for today. I want to thank Professor, uh, Professor James, Dr. Lola Julo, Professor Dr. Bakole, uh, representative from Nigeria, from the French embassy. Uh, I also want to thank my colleagues uh, I want to thank, let me start by thanking Precious, uh, Dr. Victor Eze, he is deputizing in this uh, online seminar presentation. He did a wonderful uh, justice to this paper. I also want to thank my HEBU coordinator, uh, Vitus Ukoji, he's been wonderful in, all through this work and the setup of this presentation. I'm Ayodo Kumabiola, the deputy coordinator of this project. I also want to thank um, Juliet. It's been wonderful. I really love you, Juliet. Thank you for every contribution. She has, she has always been there. And uh, thanks to my to the to the to the to the um, to Professor Mark Cantua. He's not he could not attend today's meeting. I want to believe previous one you he, he will attend. I also quickly want to remind us of our next meeting coming up on the 17th of March, 2022. Uh, it's going to be investigating gender-based violence in Nigeria. Is there a media bias? Uh, this will get to know in our next presentation. Uh, you can also link up with YouTube for past editions and uh, today's uh, presentation. Uh, if you have any question, Furthermore, if you have any question, you can uh, you can refer your question to Nigerian Wash, and more of this question will be answered. 
Thank you so much for, for being part of today's presentation. We look forward to seeing you again next week, for, next month for a beautiful edition. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.